there are quite a few words that i never understood one of one such word is quantum and then quantum physics could you please explain what do we mean by quantum or quantum physics yeah, yeah. so uh, like uh, as we have uh, if you look at the history of physics or science you have the first of all the newtonian uh, physics that is basically the classical mechanics uh, where we have the gravitation laws etc and uh, everything uh, the entire universe was working uh, like a clockwork that was the kind of uh, understanding about the universe and that is the science of uh, we call it newtonian or the the science started by isaac newton and then we slowly move to uh, this albert einstein where we made a one more leap that is the entire concept called uh, space that is 3d space and time what we perceive as time they are fused together like an alloy fused together into a concept called space time that means uh, you can travel both in forward backward direction in sp in time and in space uh, or everything is possible but still the universe is considered as a continuity like uh, uh, if you say the entire space time uh, which the einstein has uh, envisaged in the, the theories like special theories and general theory of relativity it uh, consider the entire universe is uh, like uh, in uh, like it's a permitted or it's a uh, it's actually a fabric of space time it's like a space and time combined kind of uh, entity which is uh, very fluid and like it can have curvatures when where there is a gravity etc but it's a continuum and quantum theory came as the next third level of uh, you know, like a change in the perception of universe where it introduces uh, like concept of because at the microscopic level there is no continuity mm -hmm. so you may be feeling that everything is smooth and fluid uh, like space is uh, very smooth and time is very smooth but uh, at the microscopic level that is when you go deeper into the atoms inside the atom electrons and uh, neutrons and protons so go into the nucleus and again go deeper so uh, the protons uh, or neutrons are made of quarks and you further you go deep you will have a standstill sure. everything is a quantity or quanta that is like discrete uh, components and that quanta that means uh, instead of uh, space time being a continuity it is made of chunks of uh, blocks and blocks uh, uh, of uh, entities mm -hmm. so that is called the quanta and that is where the word quanta and the study of the quantum phenomena is called the quantum physics everything started now if i can give an analogy uh, like uh, uh, digital photography uh, which is a very good analogy for the quantum physics so once you you you, know, you can take a digital photograph of a person a uh, like uh, maybe uh, your favorite actor maybe amitabh bachchan so you would zoom deeper and deeper and deeper you see after some time it's only pixels so only the, you in the, in the end and you can only see some colored dots and between dot there will be nothing sure. so this is the same thing about the universe it's may it's in other words you can say the entire universe is made of voxels some something like pixels it is made of some con, like a quantified or very smaller unit of uh, uh, space time which you cannot reduce into uh, into uh, smaller further smaller parts so once you divide things there you reach a point where you can't divide anything sure. that is the last uh, contest uh, is called planck uh, like uh, planck level mm -hmm. it's a very small number so very small space which is like a single uh, unit called quanta and that, that is what quantum theory is about and now the like a tree the quantum the, the studies have diversified into a lot of things even studying consciousness Quant sure. it is called quantum consciousness etc sure. Sure. so could you please more explain more about consciousness and then quantum consciousness and yeah. the stages of consciousness uh, yeah, for yes, a human yes. life yeah. yeah right so the 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 quantum theory uh, originated in 1900 so it's almost 100 years and uh, in the last 100 years uh, from 1900 to 2000 it was mostly focusing about uh, the uh, physical pheno the physical phenomena like uh, as i mentioned the quantas like uh, uh, and uh, what is happening inside the atom and it has got a lot of uh, valuable uh, uh, like uh, technological or insights like how do you how the different atoms behave differently all these are fruits of quantum theory sure. uh, all the, most of the chemical reactions uh, which cannot be solved in a normal classical uh, chemistry is solved by quantum theory so very complex mo molecules uh, we are able to get 
a lot of even polymer industry has benefited a lot with quantum theory. This is all material science. But 2000, we got a breakthrough, uh, starting with Roger Penrose and uh, Stuart Hameroff, mm -hmm. who have started studying uh, that, uh, uh, like they applied the principles of quantum theory in the biological systems. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, there was a kind of breakthrough moment wherein uh, one anesthetist uh, like uh, named uh, Stuart Hameroff, he found that there is uh, uh, like a quantum phenomena happening inside the neurons. Mm -hmm. And the human brain neurons, uh, you have uh, uh, the endpoints of two neurons called synapses. That is one neuron communicating with another neuron. So in that there are uh, some quantum uh, phenomena happening. And uh, he, whatever he understood by in collaboration with uh, Roger Penrose, a physicist who is uh, a very uh, well established mainstream uh, researcher in quantum theory. Uh, based on their collaborative study, it found that the consciousness that we feel inside the brain is a result of the quantum activity mm -hmm. emerging from the microtubules inside the synapses of the neurons of the human brain. Sure. So, we have reached a stage where quantum theory after explaining a lot of things in physics, cosmology and after uh, solving a lot of problems in chemistry, it is entering into the biology especially into the human brain and there you this new theory is starting, I mean it is almost 20 years, it is a very new field of science called quantum consciousness emerged. And uh, some of the uh, understand like some of the revelations uh, of the quantum consciousness studies is very much fascinating especially from a point of view of a, uh, Indian point of view because uh, some of the insights are very much rhyming with uh, Vedanta mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, there is a concept of called ambient consciousness uh, as far as con this quantum consciousness studies primary uh, primarily it is uh, creating a counter theory for the emergent consciousness theory of neuroscience because neuroscience is where we have got a theory of consciousness based on that the human brain is a complex system so any kind of complex system after crossing a sufficient level of complexity will ex exhibit the phenomenon called consciousness. consciousness and that is why human brains are exhibiting the this phenomena called consciousness this is the theory of uh, uh, neuroscience which is the um, consciousness as an emergent property that is the entire theory is uh, like uh, described in that manner. So, any system which is sufficiently complex will exhibit the property of consciousness. That is the emergent property or emergent consciousness theory. Whereas, uh, quantum consciousness, consciousness is giving in counter to that which says that consciousness is an ambient property of the universe. Like uh, the universe is called an ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, we say that there is an ambient background radiation universe uh, even though there is nothing in space there is some amount of back background radiation in the universe sure. similarly there is a, a basic base temperature of 0 kelvin sure. and it's slightly above 0 kelvin like 0 0.001 kelvin that temperature it never goes off it's always there sure. so similarly consciousness is a ambient uh, property of the universe this is the new theory uh, quantum consciousness comes so you don't have to have even if there is no complex system consciousness will exist, exist. Now, the complex system only does one extra thing, it will only increase the expressiveness of the consciousness, mm -hmm. but for creating consciousness you do not need any complex system. So, that is the new theory coming from the quantum consciousness studies and if you compare it with in Vedanta we have an equivalent concept of Brahman, Parabrahman etc, where it says it is a universal consciousness. So, if you compare whatever is uh, the, con the quantum consciousness. Uh, uh, theory uh, as well as its findings like uh, ambient consciousness, it is very much close to, I mean it is something like uh, whatever is expressed by our ancient rishis sure. in terms of uh, Upanishadic uh, insights of uh, that same thing expressed differently in a field of science. Uh, so, that is why it is very much uh, interesting and uh, this particular understanding is right from the very beginning like uh, even the initial founding fathers uh, of uh, quantum theory like uh, Stuart, uh, this uh, Erwin Schrodinger and uh, Paul Dirac and Max Planck, even Albert Einstein who was just little bit one generation earlier. All these people have un like uh, earlier uh, like uh, provided some understanding or given some sound bites saying that uh, if uh, anything the quantum studies uh, it does not make any sense unless you start reading Vedanta or Upanishad then only it makes some sense. So, that is already their recorded statement from many of the founding fathers of quantum theory, but after 100 years it is more and more proving 
uh, to be true by this uh, new in, uh, new kind of insights coming from Penrose, uh, Hammerhoff, etc. That is the thing. And then what would be the stages of consciousness for a specific human, say, yeah, A, yes. B, C or X, Y, Z. Yeah. Say, everybody would have different consciousness at a given stage, right? And how would someone evolve through that process? Yeah, yeah. So, when you have this ambient consciousness theory, which means that we have to, this is a given fact, we have to consider it as a given fact that the universe is ambiently conscious. That means, the entire universe without any complex system, right from the Big Bang onwards is conscious. And even Stuart Hammerhoff says that Big Bang moment is a conscious moment. Like, it is equivalent to the neuron firing in the synapses of the uh, human brain. So, from that point onwards, uh, when you apply consciousness to the cosmology, so whatever happened in the uh, solar system like uh, earth uh, coming to the habitable zone, uh, earth emerging as a planet in the habitable, exactly in the habitable zone of the uh, star called sun, everything uh, appear, I mean reveals to be a conscious decision. So these are all the con result of the consciousness of the uh, universe or the solar system you can say and slowly uh, you know, the whatever happened inside the planet earth, the evolution, again that also when you look at from this hindsight, it is a conscious uh, like uh, steps, like uh, the, the slowly the progression of the human, uh, the, this uh, biological life on planet earth starting with RNA complexes to DNA complexes, uh, viruses, bacteria and then slowly plants, animals, human being. This is stage by stage uh, uh, increasing the expression, expressivity of the consciousness and human beings is the ultimate or at least the current stage, this is the ultimate stage of universal consciousness getting a body enough to express itself uh, in more consciously and the remaining thing so the, there is evolution continuing on the the human body as well as the human mind so the, the human body evolution uh, it is a material thing wherein mm -hmm. you know it may it may take a different pathways than the biological evolution for example by implanting uh, artificial intelligence into human brain and expanding our capability making us hu superhuman mm -hmm like uh, ultraviolet vision, like a superman have ultraviolet vision. So, all these things are possible in the subsequent centuries sure. because you, you will have augmented eyes mm -hmm. which can see through ultraviolet and infrared or so, so material body will progress in terms of a different kind of uh, evolution. Understood. At the same time, the human mind have a kind of evolution which is like the increased awareness. So, if you uh, look at the awareness of a common uh, common man uh, that is a very simplistic awareness where he is considered as an individual mm -hmm. and then all the daily problems in the life and he just lost in the life whereas if you look at the rishis uh, or the gurus they have an elevated consciousness and uh, just one example of how what is elevated consciousness whenever there is some thought happens you are not aware of it you just get uh, flooded by that thought and its emotion Mm -hmm. And you react either you react angry or you react happy, etc. Whereas any kind of uh, person who is meditating, like our gurus uh, or uh, rishis, they are even able to recognize the thought itself. So they will say, okay, this is a thought of anger in coming inside my mind. So that is a higher level of consciousness because you are conscious about the thought and its emotion itself. So then you are able to express, uh, you may be able to mold the emotion in differently or you do not even have to react for an angry situation. So, this is the kind of a elevation and this uh, consciousness elevation happens inside the human mind. So, you do not see anything outside body, it is like in the same body, but in consciousness is evolving inside the human mind and it can reach a stage wherein it um, uh, like uh, completely break all the barriers of uh, isolation and merges with the universal consciousness. So that is the moksha or the uh, the Brahmi sthiti in the Bhagavad Gita it is made in Brahmi sthiti. So, that state you will reach. Sure. So, there is a uh, consciousness expressing right from the, crea the universe Big Bang to the formation of stars, uh, solar systems, planets uh, within the planet evolution and finally, the human body which is able to express that consciousness at the highest level thinking about universe itself, actually who is thinking, universe itself is thinking about itself. Sure. So, human being, human consciousness is nothing but a universe on consciousness mm -hmm. and it made all these steps even though it takes millions of billions of years, it is actually a sequential step for it and it care, does not care about uh, period, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one second and uh, one billion years everything is same for it, 
because it is a space time where everything has happened like in past and future everything has happened and existing in the same uh, same instant so million years or one second doesn't matter so this is conscious and it thinking about itself and once you are a human uh, body level you have two you can observe two types of evolution inner evolution that mind evolution as well as human body evolution like that so is that more to do with higher levels of tolerance and then intuitive power as you become more conscious are we saying that you become yeah. more intuitive and then uh, your tolerance would, would be more is that how it is or it is even a different state yes uh, so there is uh, like people who are hyper, super conscious so they can use it for different purposes so the main objective of most of the uh, like conscious super conscious people or the rishis is to increase the consciousness and experience the brahmi state uh, like uh, in the bhagavad gita krishna mentioned nesha brahmi stita sita partha nine like that there is a beautiful sloka in the second adhyay of uh, bhagavad gita brahmi state he is explained mm -hmm. that is similar like the moksha etc but uh, the moksha concept is like at your end of life you reach that stage but krishna is saying brahmi state is like in the current moment itself you can be in that state so sure. and after experiencing that state you will climb down into a normal state also yeah. so that is also like a uh, focus nobody can fight a battle in brahmi state in the brahmi state there is uh, you are he is one with the consciousness there is no actions or anything mm -hmm. but then people climb down to the current reality or the current state wherein they can do perform action so people who are into the higher consciousness they can actually use it for elevating further into the brahmi state mm -hmm. or you can use that higher perception etc for anything anything like related to the material purposes so then they become a great some of them become great musician uh, where with a very super, very kind high quality kind of capabilities or they become uh, like uh, healers like can heal the uh, like uh, diseases so they use it for uh, material purposes or for the for for helping the fellow human beings etc perfect understood so we spoke about human evolution and then human consciousness but the very existence of life or creation of life on this universe or perhaps on this planet right was that a pure accident or it was also consciously done by someone yeah yes, yes. so the current evolution theory which have started with no connection with the consciousness theory uh, it has got everything it explains a lot of things in a very nice manner very logical way uh, like right from the creation of the the microbes uh, like uh, the rna dna complex i mentioned and other viral bacterial kind of life slowly protozoa and the, so this is explaining in a very logical manner sure uh, the evolution of life in stage by stage and you got lot of evidences for the different stages of evolution also existing one big flaw of uh, evolution is uh, which is a big big gap is it uh, ex uh, like uh, and is, uh, like it's uh, cannot explain how this can happen randomly so the randomness is a big flaw inside the uh, like uh, current evolution theory but uh, when you combine the consciousness theory quantum consciousness theory with the uh, human evolution theory biological human evolution discovered by darwin you create a more stronger stronger theory Uh, that is evolution uh, conscious evolution theory mm -hmm. so in the conscious evolution theory what it happens is that because we are saying the universe is ambiently conscious mm -hmm. that means all the stages which led to the uh, evolution of uh, life in earth is actually a conscious deci conscious decisions yeah uh, like right from the formation of the solar system in the periphery of the milky way galaxy there is a conscious decision because mm -hmm. if it is closer to the new uh, center of the galaxy there will be lot of x ray cosmic radiations mm -hmm. compared to where it is in the peripheral solar system is formed in the periphery of the galaxy galaxy yeah. and in then the solar system earth is formed exactly uh, in the habitable zone of the uh, this uh, uh, sun so this is again a conscious decision like it is selection there is some selection happening there sorry but by by whom consciousness consciousness okay. that is like because the what is the one of the primary activity of consciousness is just uh, study itself so sure. because consciousness uh, in a recursive manner uh, analyze itself or reflect on itself that is a correct word reflect on itself so the entire evolution is a result of that the consciousness trying to 
observe itself or reflect on itself that is the objective for that they some intelligent or uh, some some human some body has to be created where the consciousness can express uh, in properly so that it can observe itself so that is why this entire conscious selections are happening and once you have a planet in the habitable zone with uh, you know, sufficient mix of nitrogen oxygen everything and then uh, the primordial uh, ocean with a lot of uh, you no know, like in uh, this uh, nutrients basically yeah, yeah. Uh, that becomes a sufficient condition where the life can start and it starts and every stage there is a conscious decisions finally reaching to the you know, stage of a human being and the once you are a human being then you have you develop science you develop literature you have the the biggest discovery of the human being is fire is one thing but the remaining the, the other second biggest discovery is ability to accumulate knowledge. knowledge so from very past centuries onwards whatever knowledge we are able to accumulate which animals never able to do so that is our biggest asset so finally the universe wanted to create a being like that is a human being which can uh, is a kind of a, you can the machine is a wrong word but it's a kind of a method by which there is a possibility of observing the universe and we become observers of universe so the entire pathway leading to the human evolution is a guided process the conscious selection of the consciousness okay brilliant point i would say okay so we spoke about human evolution and then of course the way humans progressed and then how perhaps they were created through consciousness right and then you mentioned about time right people say that time is an illusion there is no difference between a second and and a billion years of time okay is time really an illusion ah yes yes so in fact poetically people say about uh, time being an illusion i mean if uh, from the point of a science also uh, it is more or less true because our perception of time like uh, you know uh, like things we perceive it because of changes like uh, uh, like when you, when i am starting from the home uh, there is a certain uh, like time like it was in the morning and then uh, after reaching another destination it becomes uh, you know, like uh, uh, there is some so there is a sense of, of change that is a fundamental uh, like perception that create the concept of time but uh, when you look at uh, how the way the the theoretical science that is uh, the einstein's equations you see that uh, no einstein's the direct direct from the mathematical equation so it's not something like poetry or magic yeah, yeah direct from the mathematical equation he says that time is perceived by di- different people differently absolutely if anybody yeah. moves in a different speed of like comparative to the speed of light if a person is moving in uh, then their perception of time is different from anybody who is stationary mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so then science is in a way say that uh, time is illusion yeah. of course yeah. our perception of time is illusion so sure. sure. which is also the uh, when the, in a in a proper formal methodology uh the einsteinian equations also proving that yeah yeah so there is a relative the time is a relative concept so like uh, for a for a person who is uh, in a different velocity can have a different sensation of time yeah, yeah, people yeah. in a different in a gravity well can have a different sensation like uh, time moves slower in a gravity well but compared to well places where there is less gravity i mean time moves faster in a gravity well and less gravity like it is uh, slower like that that kind of uh, things are there and similarly uh, faster moving people the, the time slows down uh, people who are accelerating the time slows down so there is a complete break up of our current our perception normal perception of time is completely broken down and then as we go up into the space right yes. time it, it does slow down a bit yeah yes okay. and uh, if it is also observed like uh, when the atomic clocks were high precision clocks which can record uh, microseconds or nanoseconds you can see a difference in the clocks uh, which is placed in outer space and on the planet earth surface of the earth so the einsteinian theory is also proven and uh, some of the even the orbit of mercury uh, some orbital uh, that uh, because relativity equations are helping us to resolve some anomaly because in a, in a newtonian gravitational laws it will be an anomaly we cannot there is no explanation but we include that this time space time contraction component the gra- the orbit of mercury becomes correct so there are some studies and uh, even the curvature of space which is also completely observed when the light pass through some very 
high heavy gravity uh, stars it will bend light bend the light mm -hmm. and uh, even when einstein lived uh, he was speculating about black holes sure. now plenty of black, black holes we have discovered sure. and there the the kind of uh, time uh, around the black hole also we have directly observed so whatever theoretical science has become practical practically observable now where the time very clearly is a very kind of illusory thing yeah i mean of course uh, not like a poet says because there is equations to say in what level it is in illusion because so it is not unpredictable we can predict it sure. a poet simply says time is illusion mm -hmm. and there is no way the poet can make sense of it but because of the theories equations even though actually time is really an illusion we can make sense of it sure we can know like what is the time flow for a particular individual using the equation equation yeah yeah but but what do you infer from say the future the past and also the present they all exist at the same time like when we have seen yeah, yes. the movie arrival correct so ha, what do you what do you infer from that right right so uh, see the this is not something like which is uh, just now discovered it's like from the theory of relativity onwards like einstein's theory of relativity onwards so even special relativity not even general relativity Uh, the moment we conceive space time from that moment onwards time has to be considered like space sure so you have forward direction backward direction upward downward left and right so past and future are two directions sure. when you say there are two directions that means anything in the past is anything in the future exist in a space time sure. as if it is there forever eternally and so that means uh, again this completely blows away our concept of time because we have to conceive that past and present is existing at the same time yeah yeah so yeah. in an instant or uh, that is the only word we can use because instant itself is a word based on our own uh, like cultural evolution we have to say in an instant in that instant past and future are both there, there. but of course uh, the quantum theory came disrupted this little bit it says that past is frozen whereas future is there but there are multiple futures Sure. So that uh, that same some modification uh, created by quantum theory. Sure. So the future is fuzzy. It is still there. Future is uh, exactly like whatever our past exists, our future also exists. But future exists in superpositions. Understood. That's where perhaps this entropy ah. concept comes in. Yeah. yeah. Because so whenever any moment you make a decision, you you collapse uh, one of the possibilities into a reality. Reality. Understood. So uh, as far as uh, quantum theory is content is slightly modified the future part of the space time yeah. using a probabilistic equation sure so in that probabilistic equation multiple futures are in a superposition sure. and okay. your conscious decision will make one of them from a probability to reality reality so okay. that your your own thoughts you your own mind uh, is actually creating that future for you then you come back to the old uh, old notion that you create your future so sure. no it, it, you know when i hear this it looks like a brilliant concept to me so what what about time travel now that we are discussing more about time ah, yes. and also the fourth fifth dimensions yes. time travel is time travel possible into the past and also into the future correct and about what about fourth or fifth dimension that people speak about yeah yes so good it's a good question because uh, many people think that uh, you can explain the reality with four dimensions yes. but actually it is not true because in if you want to also understand the gravity well you ought to have the fifth dimension because the curvature of uh, the earth uh, uh, the space in the earth around uh, earth uh, in uh, like premises or black holes uh, you know the curvature and depth if everything is in the fifth dimension so if you have five dimension uh, the three dimensions of space the fourth dimension being time and there is a fifth dimension then you can actually explain the time travel etc where no the what happens is that uh, because einsteinian equation doesn't pro prohibit any tra any kind of uh, time travel sure. you can travel from current moment to future to past uh, past and future are symmetric mm -hmm. in einstein space time and both have same properties so while we move in past you mean in future no problem actually sure. uh, but uh, after einstein equation the quantum theory came then thermodynamics another uh, like field of science which says that uh, you may be able to travel to future because uh, the thermodynamics and entropy decide that uh, you know information uh, can travel from current moment to the forward direction but not in the backward direction 
Wow. Uh, because uh, when you are moving into the, if you take information from current, uh, like present to the past, the cost effect relationship will be affected. Mm -hmm. Because some of the effect, because uh, the consequence of an action itself becomes the, the cause for an action. Mm -hmm. So there become a causality loop will be created. Mm -hmm. And then the everything will become illogical. So that is the kind of principle that is the entropy principles, mm -hmm. according to which uh, time travel to future is possible, but time travel to past is not possible. But then science didn't stop at that point. Mm -hmm. So they introduced the concept of multiverse. Correct. So multiverse, if you want to consider, you have to consider one more dimension. So uh, sixth dimension, sixth dimension, if you include, you can say there are multiple uni five dimensional universes. Sure. One universe, five dimension. Uh, parallel universe in the uh, stacked up like layers of a book, mm -hmm. like pages of a book. One page is uh, one universe with uh, five dimensions, like uh, three dimensions of space, one dimension of time and uh, one dimension for the gravity uh, mm -hmm. curvature. Mm -hmm. So that five dimensional uh, universes are like pages of a book stacked up in the sixth uh, dimension. So this kind of a universe, if a person travel from, you know, then this kind of universe allows travel into the past. Correct. So for example, if a person is uh, starting from uh, 2023, 20, uh, traveling into 1793 BC, for example, mm -hmm. he is actually traveling and landing up in another parallel universe. So that causality, the, the cost effect relationship, this universe is not affected. Understood. So there is no intersection then. Basically, yeah. so yeah. I, I cannot change whatever that has happened, but I can create a whole new universe. Yes, and when you go to that parallel universe, you started changing that universe from the moment you landed up. Absolutely. Yeah. So I can create whatever I want. Yes. So, so just one example is to define this grandfather paradox. I mean, yeah, maybe I, so many people have talked <laughs> about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, so in a universe where there is no parallel universe, no, there is only same universe kind of scenario. If a grandson uh, travel and go to the timeline of uh, I mean, period of his grandfather kills because his some grandfather. <laughs> reason he kills the grandfather automatically grandfather is not there yeah. then his parents are not there he doesn't exist so he just you know there are absurd situation like he disappears you know that kind of thing yeah. but when you have parallel universe this grandfather paradox is not there sure. because sure. he may be killing a grandfather copy in another universe sure. whereas his own existence is not disappearing. So his grandfather would be a different life in a different universe. Yeah. So this multiverse concept has another, has so many other assumptions like whatever life that is happening for us in this universe is exactly replicated in other universes like ditto copies which are this will just uh, will be not be contaminated until the point you travel to your past. The moment you travel and uh, interfere with that particular universe from that point onwards history of the universe will change. Sure. Sure. So that is the theory, but all these things are only in the theoretical level, yeah. unfortunately, because at least for other parts of the instance theories about uh, time being an illusory, like as I mentioned, the time slow moves slower. These are all theoretically and practically proven, whereas multiverse is yet to be proven, basically. But uh, this is the only logical way in which you can resolve a travel to past. Sure. So we spoke about multiverse. Before I jump onto the question, are we alone in this or rather on this planet and then are we, are we the only living species uh, you know, as compared to a lot of other planets? Right? I, I would love to touch upon, you spoke about time leakage, right? Yeah, yes. Could you please explain more on that before I jump on? To ah, yes, yes. So the time leakage concept is uh, uh, on the basis of this uh, multiverse and time moving, traveling to past. So when you have the possibility of traveling to past, which is theoretically possible in a multiverse kind of a scenario, there is the concept of uh, like uh, you coming from your, un uh, your universe and going into the past and then some elements of your future gets into that uh, the parallel universe, past of that parallel universe. Sure. So uh, I mean there are no evidences uh, straight away coming in, but there are certain unusual discoveries in archaeology. Uh, which uh, you know, uh, like for example, very recently, I, like I heard about some electronic component uh, discovered in a uh, like a layer of earth, which is equivalent to some 2,000 years or 1,000, 1,500 years into the past, or 2,000 or 3,000 years into the past, 
you got an electronic component mm -hmm. so of course people are not jumping into the conclusion but uh, because there is a, a very rare kind of scenario where the earthquake happens so the layer cons the layering of archaeology get disrupted so for example so the archaeology have heard some definitions like whatever found in a particular depth is equivalent to this particular century or past century or past millennium so whichever is in the deeper layer they will automatically in their calculus they will automatically associate with the very past uh, period mm -hmm. so they are still going on whether it is because of some earthquake churning happened in the layers that something uh, electronics of uh, you know 1960s or uh, that get buried deeper and then by accident they are considering it as some 3000 year old mm -hmm. artifact but if that theory is completely uh, ex uh, reject, uh, rejected i mean excluded the only possibility is somebody travel to that point yeah. from past. So, there are certain uh, I mean, unconfirmed uh, evidences for traveling from uh, future to past, uh, in the, but it is still unconfirmed. And just like uh, the people are, because most of the people who are uh, doing this kind of research will be professional archaeologists, etc., care a lot about their reputation. So, <laughs> in order to open their mouth, they have to think ten, 10 times. So, but it's after the complete filtering happened that all other explanations are uh, not, if you reach, reach a conclusion that no other explanation is possible, then it becomes an evidence for time travel from future to past. Sure, sure. So, are we alone in this universe or uh, right. there could be multiple universes, multiple galaxies? Yeah, yeah. Is yes. someone already living with us from, uh, who is from a different planet or a different galaxy? Correct, correct. What's yeah. your take on that? Yeah, so the people ask it in a different way, like about a, like they say straight away use that dirty word aliens, whether it is there. So the thing is, uh, I have been explaining in many of the podcasts that um, theoretically, like just like the Einstein equations are giving you giving you the magical result that uh, time is moving differently for different people. It is initially shocking, but uh, no natural after understanding for 100 years of Einstein theory, then it is natural. So, similarly, the presence of aliens is naturally theoretically given by all the uh, like uh, equations, like uh, Drake equation is one of the important thing, uh, where it says that any galaxy uh, like Milky Way galaxy can have a minimum of 30 to 35 intelligent uh, species, like Earth-like planet mm -hmm. sustaining intelligent life. So, the equations which uh, takes about a lot of parameters like the number of uh, uh, like uh, planets in the galaxy and uh, various other fa factors like radiation inside the galaxy, habitable, again just like the every star got a habitable zone, the galaxy itself have a habitable zone. Sure, sure. So, based on all these parameters, the Drake equation defines that the res final result of the Drake equation is that every galaxy have 35, minimum 30 to 35 uh, planets like Earth which can sustain intelligent life. So, the number of galaxies in the universe is billions and billions of galaxies Absolutely. are there. Yeah. So, that means you have to multiply billions and billions with 35. <laughs> so, that many number of intelligent uh, planet, uh, life sustaining planets are there. So, that means you have a very, uh, like presence of aliens is not a big deal because this many number of intelligent life is there then some of, somebody will be there in earth also. Sure. And of course, uh, that does not mean that they are very like very open to di getting discovered. So, uh, because of different reasons, they may be a little bit slightly not interested in interfering with our civilization. Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of theories about it. Uh, so, one is about the presence part. Uh, for that, I need to talk about the, the scale of civilization like L1, L1, L2, L3 like that there is a scale. So, L1 is the situation some 2000 years back, we have Egyptian civilization, Indus Valley civilization all the Greek and uh, Roman and uh, Mesopotamian Chinese. Yeah. So, individual local civilizations were there on the planet earth. So, that is the L1 stage, localized stage. Currently, we are living in L2 stage where it is a global civilization, mm -hmm. where people can travel anywhere in the pl planet earth in within 24 hours, everything is, every place is accessible. Mm -hmm. So, that is the L2 stage, the global civilization. And we are slowly doing the baby step towards the L3, mm -hmm. where we start uh, permanent settlements, possibility of uh, multiple missions to moon, Mars. So, ISRO is doing that baby steps towards the L3 level, where you will have a permanent plus in presence in solar system. So, 300 years from now, the we will be living 
I mean 30 percent of the human population may be living in solar system sure. and remaining 70 percent on planet earth like that there is a prediction sure. that is the L3 level and after L3 you know the civilization progress it become interstellar where we had a capability to living another star like Proxima Centauri or Sirius or Leo constellation there are habitable planets yeah, there yeah, yeah. so that possibility is there after that is the L4 stage interplanetary and the L5 is the galactics where the entire galaxy becomes a uh, like a civilization, galactic civilization. Just like if we say global, they say galactic, galactic civilization. Yeah. So countries will be like some some parts of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Like this left hand, uh, to, to, the left hand side of the galaxy will be one country and the right hand side another, so many other countries. So that will be like a galactic civilization. And then intergalactic and then the cosmic and intercosmic. So like that it, the scale goes. So Assume that there are, see I mentioned 35 intelligent uh, civilizations exist in a planet, maybe one or two can be even uh, interstellar civilization like or because L, L1, L2, L3 does not participate mm -hmm. like local civilization, global civilization in a planet, interplanetary civilization of that star, these three people does not participate sure. but L4 onwards like interstellar and L5 sure. galactic and intergalactic L6. L4, L5, L6, these kind of civilizations can be present in another planet like for example their planet from there they move and spread across the uh, other stars they also can come in uh, planet earth and reside here. Sure. So this is why I say theoretically there are no blockages for having alien presence uh, in planet earth and of course the, to answer your question uh, the li intelligent life existing in the galaxies anywhere in the universe automatically the theory says yes so sure. but how how do you think the life would be supported to them of course you know we need oxygen and then yeah. 70 percent of our body is covered with water and just like uh, mm -hmm. so how do you think earth can support any other form of intelligent life that is existing mm -hmm. on earth that is coming from a different galaxy or a different universe ah right so the uh, the uh, one of the big thing is the evolution sure. uh, so the evolution what it does is uh, like um, any any kind of life anywhere in the uh, any planet it will subject to evolution so some basic things are guaranteed like there is a electromagnetic radiation so there will be sensors to detect the electromagnetic radiation so and get a perception of the things present in, in surrounding that is the eyes so never every uh, living uh, like organism anywhere in forming any alien species they will have eyes that is natural and then uh, any the, typically the all the living this uh, living beings uh, anywhere in earth or anywhere they are living in a fluid environment fluid means air or water so fishes are living in air, water we are living in surrounded by air so this will create acoustic vibrations that we call sound vibration so definitely they will develop ears for recognizing the sound vibrations in the fluid medium eyes and ears are guaranteed and they need a kind of thinking uh, module, module. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. that is of the human brain, so brain something yeah. like a head is natural. Sure. And of course, uh, the other five or five senses, like the, any kind of uh, uh, living system, they define their boundary with uh, you know their, their, the, that is the skin is their boundary. Sure. So anything contacting with the boundary that they need to know. So the skin is natural. Mm -hmm. Now the two things which can be a little bit ambivalent is the nose and tongue, mm -hmm. which are like a Nose is uh, actually doing a, like a sensing of the chemical combination of things coming through air and tongue is doing the same thing coming through the mouth. So there, there may be like sometimes some people, some may be li living beings can only have uh, this uh, one of them or two of them, maybe three of them that can be a variability. Mm -hmm. But the other things like uh, eyes, sight and uh, he hearing and touch sensation are universal. Uh, so all the living systems will have and head and then they need to consume food for that something like mouth will be there. So there are so many common elements even if the DNA structure itself is different so many common elements uh, for any living uh, alien any kind of extraterrestrial civilization and human being they have. and of course two organs two or, or multiple limbs for uh, controlling or interacting with the systems natural systems or with the electronic systems or whatever they that hands and fingers are all natural. Sure, sure. So this, this much is natural uh, for the legs can be an axillary because yeah. 
Now, if you are walking on the surface of earth, you need legs. If you are uh, floating in the water, you, you don't need leg, you need a tail like a fish. Yeah. Yeah. So, these are all variables. So, you can say so much of parameters of evolution is guaranteed to be there. So, you can actually define like certain structures are normal. And if you look at the, 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 the thousand, uh, thousand year old mummy, you have similar kind of, the, the, all the parameters are there like it is humanoid like, that is because of that. Yeah, now coming to the question of uh, sustain, uh, earth sustaining other uh, uh, like living beings, See, uh, certain, uh, some of the like researchers consider that water and ox uh, this oxygen are also very much natural. Uh, because earlier like 20 years back they think that the other living beings may be uh, not consuming water it can be a methane based <laughs> metabolism <laughs> or uh, a non -ox or non oxygen it, in, within earth itself it was there earlier oh okay uh, older li life in earth was not considering oxygen as a toxin okay. and with if you oxygen is there the the life will die oh that wow. was there in the planet earth so but when was that though? Sorry to interrupt. When was that? In the, during the evolution during process, the evolution process the cyanobacteria, okay. etc. Okay. When they okay. are developing oxygen, okay. they were not consuming oxygen. Oxygen was a toxic gas at that time. So slowly after the plant life originated, oxygen becomes a life-giving kind of a brilliant. Okay. Uh, thing. Okay. So within the earth evolution itself, oxygen is not a kind of a mandatory thing for life, but water is. And so many people include, like I included about the five sense organs, four or five sense organs and limbs, hands and uh, brain and mouth as a natural consequence of evolution everywhere. A large number of people consider water as a natural thing. And because earlier we, we have not explored very less the solar system. Now everywhere you find water, moon we have water presence, sure. very yeah. like a yeah. kind of a, uh, not a water pool or anything like that, but water is there in the soil and so many other moons like Europa. Uh, then uh, Enceladus, everything have water, ocean itself, mm -hmm. Titan have uh, uh, methane ocean and but of course some presence of water etc. So water now and also a lot of comments have huge amount of water. Mm -hmm. So water is now considered as a H2O considered as a kind of a universally available kind of a thing. So mostly other extraterrestrial life also have some kind of uh, basis on water. So these are the reasons why the extraterrestrial uh, people we are able to come in earth and you know, live on earth actually. And of course, they have so much of technology wherein if they are breathing a different gas, yeah, yeah. it is a simple thing like yeah, they put some implant on the nose or wherever they are breathing there you put some implant that whatever, uh, you know, it can extract whatever gases it require from the uh, atmosphere. Sure. Uh, so that is not, not a well, technology is there, anything, any kind of gaps which uh, nature is not able to provide, technology will uh, like uh, eliminate that. Very good point. Yeah. So, just a question here. If if an intelligent life from other planet comes here and then starts living mm -hmm. here, maybe for a few centuries, mm -hmm. okay, right? And then by the time they try to go back to that particular planet, right? Life evolves, and then life has changed dramatically for them as well, just like the way life changed on Earth. Say, for mm -hmm. example, oxygen was not a necessity then; mm -hmm. it has become a necessity post uh, the plants evolved, etc. So, do you think that's also a possibility on say another other asteroids or planets? Say when they start oh, living yeah. here and then they start to lose uh, their right or rather their eligibility oh, yeah. to live on other planet. Is that a possibility? There is a possibility, but uh, typically most of the time the visitation is Earth is nothing more than a tourist visit, where this is a very temporary kind of uh, presence here, and their technology may even allow because when you have warp drives, etc. Uh, going to their planet is as good as like crossing a, a door because you create basically you create you don't go the speed of light or anything right so you don't go in using a spacecraft you are not traveling in trying to travel uh, speed of light or anything so typically what they have will they create a wormhole uh, on planet earth which opens up into the other side of it opens up into their planet in their home for example so it's as good as uh, just crossing a door Understood. Or maybe a crossing a corridor of some 100 meters, sure. that much they will be close. Sure. So, I mean that is the kind of technology will allow them to be here, sure. not like uh, traveling through space. They will be traveling for this through the wormholes, warp drives, etc. Sure. Sure. So, this, this kind of uh, adaptation problem will not be there, but any kind of species who lives for because of various reasons, which is what that mummy is also saying. Maybe yeah. they may be living here for a long period of time. Will get adopted to the 
climate, climate uh, yeah. and uh, the way of life in planet earth but it will be like there is no way of communicating it back to their original planet because this is something like a tourism visit kind sure, of thing so sure. uh, but is sending electromagnetic magnetic waves only way to discover life on other planets or other universes or is there some other way to discover yeah. intelligent form of life on other planets or yeah yeah so the current uh, one of the major activity of uh, search for extraterrestrial life seti is to send uh, like uh, signals uh, intelligent signals even seeking the presence of or uh, inviting the aliens to uh, other uh, other intelligent species to earth uh, but it's a very good initiative but the one problem with that initiative is that the, we are actually doing the electromagnetic radiation uh, you know, methodology like you are spending the signals through as electromagnetic waves there is no sufficient we have started doing it for less than 100 years so 100 years uh, there is a very less time to sufficiently uh, like this to the signals to travel and reach uh, any kind of destination where any anybody is ready to receive it mm -hmm. uh, but so maybe the the scientific community typically the city thinks that uh, because they are sending the electromagnetic <laughs> radiation uh, signals uh, inviting the aliens or telling about our presence some of the aliens get attracted and coming here maybe that may be true for a uh, within 100 light years if there is an intelligent civilization that may be true because uh, i mean i mean even not even 100 i mean 50 years for 50 light years then you have only proxima centauri and such uh, uh, like uh, uh, stars within that 50 light year range but the majority or major reasons why the aliens will be coming is earth itself is a signal yeah, yeah. because earth is a uh, like uh, for a for millions of years earth is sustaining life sure. uh, and earth is like a habitable planet mm -hmm. and the earth being a habitable planet itself is a signal which is active for millions of years and that could be the reason why like that will be the major reason why anybody extraterrestrial intelligence like L4 or uh, uh, this L4, L5, L6 will come to earth sure, sure. And because millions of years means uh, earth being in existence that electromagnetic radiation from earth is traveling uh, across the uh, galaxy sure. and the radius of that electromagnetic messaging is millions of kilometer radius. So earth is inviting the <laughs> uh, the extra, extra I mean ter theoretically speaking earth is the main invader of extraterrestrial life into uh, earth whereas the city thinks that it is 50 years whatever they are doing so it's a funny thing but that is the reality so sure. but you know we would love to touch upon your the, the scholarly of you here you know where you have been researching a lot on Ramayana and then Mahabharata right if someone from a different planet or a different universe is capable of coming onto the earth, on, onto planet earth, right? So are all our gods aliens or are they all or are they, were they all coming from a different planet, planets mm. or planet? Did that happen or did they just, or, or are they, were they all just born as human and then they became gods eventually? Yeah, yeah, so this is a very common question uh, that many people ask like uh, when they combine the alien theory with our ancient text etc. So uh, because one of the thing is I am a realist, so uh, when I look at the data I will look at uh, whether I am making any sweeping claims. So as I look at the literature, for example uh, I am looking at the literature starting from the Rig Veda, I do not see anything which uh, indicate that uh, the devatas are uh, like aliens or anything like that. Uh, or uh, only the kind of some kind of a, a kind of extraterrestrial signatures start coming from Mahabharata onwards. Uh, where Ramayana, you have the Vimana is slightly there, but the data when I look at it is not very much uh, uh, very strong enough to say that uh, it is not different from a poetic imagination. Sure. So sure. there are uh, two contenders, two competing com competing uh, kind of uh, uh, perspective to analyze the ancient text. So one is that some strange phenomena inside the ancient text uh, like Itihasas uh, because Rig Veda is very straightforward, it is not much into some magical things, very less uh, kind of thing. There is only some very rare, rare poetry where say the in Indra is coming from Divi uh, for uh, rituals and then after taking Havis, uh, Soma goes back, uh, the chariot is coming from an elevated pla uh, place to come back to the Rishis and after the Soma drink he went back to his abode uh, where he live with Indraniya. So there is very very 
five percent of magical elements in Rig Veda, whereas uh, there are so much of magical kind of narratives in Mahabharata, Ramayana and Mahabharata. So there are two competitive things. One is poetic imagination. Just like we can imagine the Rishis, uh, the Valmiki and Vyasa, they are all imaginative people. They can also imagine. Just like we write science fiction, they can also write science fiction. Sure. So, I have to look at the possibility that some of the things mentioned is not poetic imagination. Mm -hmm. Anything which can be explained as poetic imagination, because that is the more pl more uh, uh, more plausible theory. Because there is a gradation of theories also, right? The postulations, the postulations have gradation. The, uh, whenever you can explain something, you have to choose the simplest simplest explanation as the priority. Sure. So I, I use that principle because uh, I am being a scientist. So I look at anything magical. I see whether is there a possibility to explain it as a poetic imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it is not explainable as a poetic imagination, then only other theories have a place. So then I heard so this is even if poet imagines this much so much of detail is there. So naturally there should be some uh, either the poet or he heard from somebody else who have seen ex extraterrestrial yeah. vehicle. So that kind of scenario, I in Ramayana is not there. Most of thing can be explained as a poetic imagination. In the Mahabharata, there is a kind of situation where there is a Arjuna, uh, there is a uh, Arjuna Baigamana. There is a passage in the Mahabharata Vanaparva where Arjuna is going for getting Pashupata Astra from Shiva, and there is a narrative where the Matali, the the charioter of Indra, comes down and picking up Arjuna, and that description about uh, the the that particular vehicle which coming for lifting uh, Arjuna from a mountain peak, uh, Indrakila mountain, the uh, mountain peak, it has got all the telltale signature of a extraterrestrial vehicle. Sure. So that I considered as a one of the important data leak. Uh, you can say data leakage or data which is got recorded into one of the itihasas that is Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. Contrary to every everything in Ramayana, it is Mahabharata where it is very clearly recorded. So here also I consider it as a, see, I do not straight away, straight away I do not connect it with Arjuna or with Indra. Mm -hmm. So the things because the Mahabharata and Ramayana they evolved from the period of lifetime of the Rama and the Pandavas, they evolved even for thousands of years, thousand years. Mm -hmm. After the lifetime of Pandavas and after the life of Ramayana, both the Itihasas evolved for a long period of time. Sure. So this, this particular extraterrestrial encounter might have taken place anywhere in this thousands years period of evolution period of Mahabharata and Ramayana and got recorded. Then the, the poet can actually after getting the information about the spacecraft very well detailed and very well looks like a really an, an extraterrestrial experience that get attached to some favorite heroes like, uh, uh, like Arjuna or Matali or Indra. So that is how I explain it because direct evidence I do not see from the directly to say that uh, Indra is alien or Arjuna is alien or Rama is, I do not see that coming from the data. Sure, sure. So, but of course, the signatures are getting recorded into the Mahabharata especially sure. in the long period of its evolution because it evolved from uh, like as late as 300 BC, sure. 300 BC or 1st century BC, sure. that much period it evolved. So, somewhere in the 1st millennium BC or 2nd millennium BC, there could be an extraterrestrial encounter even which got recorded in a different way into the Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. That is high possibility because it is really not possible for a poet to uh, like uh, imagine. imagine this machineries etc. which is mentioned in that sure. and coming in my third book Geography of Ramayana. Great, brilliant. But if Rama was a human was or perhaps was born as a human, right? why did he or how could he have so many superpowers? When I say superpowers, or rather the courage to say kill someone like Ravana who had 10 heads as we all read in Ramayana. So ah. how was that possible? Yeah, yeah. So see for example, current understanding about uh, Ramayana or Mahabharata, 80-90% it is uh, driven by the, uh, the, the this uh, television serials etc. Uh, so maybe out of uh, 120 or 130 crore people who are enthusiastic about Ramayana or Mahabharata, they read, uh, they see the television serial. 90, 10% may be reading some translation of Bibek Dabroy, the full abridged version of Bibek Dabroy, maybe 10% may be reading. Even only 1% reading the actual Sanskrit slogans of the uh, Ramayana and Mahabharata. And when you read, once you read that, you do not come to that kind of conclusion because 
in the valmiki ramayana rama is mentioned typically as a normal human being by valmiki with Correct. very less kind of exaggeration absolutely yeah. only few chapters few sargas only talk about divyastras mm-hmm. one in with the vishwamitra uh, one in uh, when interaction with vishwamitra and very rarely two three sargas in the yuddha kanda so excluding that everything is normal astras naracha that is Correct. iron arrow uh, naracha and uh, considered as all the normal astras actually so i have to explain it as a poetic imagination uh, at that level because we don't get so much of uh, information about it being a nuclear weapon or anything like that but things are different in again i think are different in the mahabharata where there are statements which uh, actually the poet cannot just imagine unless they have some kind of experience sure. not the actual poet maybe subsequent contributed to the mahabharata they say there is some message some kind of uh, uh, description that this particular astra if it falls into a country that entire country and all the neighboring country will be destroyed destroyed, yeah. destroyed and there will be not be a, a growth of grass or even the children will be still born etc yeah, yeah. which is a real thing i mean because poet cannot imagine that level unless there is some experience of it so i see again i have to come by the second itihasa mahabharata have uh, so much of signatures which points towards two things either extraterrestrial vehicular presence like mm-hmm. flying vehicular kind of uh, experience and uh, ex- extraterrestrial or advanced weaponry kind of an experience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this is beyond poetic imagination sure. so i have already discounted poetic imagination still there is something which we cannot explain as a poetic imagination so you spoke about yastras in ramayana or mahabharat right? how can the astras be so powerful is that a, a pure will power of the person who was actually trying to kill someone or destroy someone or were they really powerful or we had such a sophisticated technology in those days itself to manufacture something like a nuclear weapon yeah yeah so uh, that's very interesting question and uh, there there are a lot of theories uh, about uh, how in the past there can be kind of uh, advanced technology etc so being a realist i don't believe in uh, that uh, there was a past tech, uh, no in the past period there were advanced technologies which got destroyed and then uh, because there is no archaeological evidence for that but there is a possibility you now the the time leakage concept i mentioned because of which the people from future can travel into the past moment because see for example the the event happened that the events of ramayana rama's events or pandavas events are all discussed all over the big country like india with uh, this many number of people for a long period of time and we never forget it like it happened see of course my dates for uh, man and mahabharata are uh, like uh, uh, like median chronology dates but irrespective of the date of the ramayana and mahabharata the people are not forgetting and it is continuously we are thinking about it, it. that is an important point sure. that means it will continue in future also absolutely it may even continue the point when time travel will be invented mm-hmm. still time also people will talk about ramayana and mahabharata and what if some people uh, travel backwards and wanted to see the actual kurukshetra uh, yeah, yeah or uh, the events or events okay yeah uh, so there could be you know that kind of a situation Uh, but we can't uh, see uh, whether as then that means automatically there will be evidence in the mahabharata or ramayana itself mm-hmm. that somebody watched mahabharata or ramayana mm-hmm. and uh, to my surprise right there is a, the again it can be a poetic imagination but uh, whenever this uh, mahabharata war happens there are couple of shlokas which says that there were so many observers coming and watching it okay so and they say yeah. there was gandharvas uh, and other people yeah. coming yeah. and watching yeah. Yeah. maybe among them there could be some people from the future who have come and seen it <laughs> so we don't know right because at least the it is mentioned that observers were watching it sure. and that is like a kind of a one leg into the possibility that you no know, there may be somebody traveling from future and seeing it but not us because we have not invented time machine yet in future if somebody has invented time machine they will also be inspired by kurukshetra war or uh, by uh, rama ravana war or they can so then this happen like that other concept i mentioned right slowly some technology leakage will happen yeah yeah into the ancient period and uh, now some of the technology see for example the closest to whatever the pandavas uh, that, that the divyastras of pandavas uh, or brahmastra 
which uh, very rarely mentioned in Ramana, but lot of uh, time mentioned in the Mahabharata, can be diluted nuclear weapons or nuclear fusion weapons, diluted. Because currently the keyword is dilution, because actual nuclear weapon nobody wants it, because it will destroy uh, the entire country or uh, even nobody wants to destroy an enemy country. Sure. Now, once you does that, then you become the big hated, most hated uh, person in the in, in the world. In the world, yeah. So, if you destroy Pakistan, maybe we may be tempted to destroy Pakistan with a nuclear weapon. But next day onwards, India will be seen in a different light. So, nobody wants any nuclear weapon now. Everybody, everybody researching on diluted nuclear weapons, yeah. which are like very less nuclear material, uh, that too fusion material with uh, uh, ra no radiation, I mean avoiding radiation because radiation is bad for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And the re even Indian research is going on, so many other countries are also researching. So, this can be released on a projectile, like, uh, like even like uh, it can be released on a bow, uh, no, on an arrow. Mm -hmm. So now, anyway, we don't have bows and arrows anymore, so people are releasing it in a missile. Sure, sure. So it will only destroy maybe a hundred acres of you no know, some very small within less less than a kilometer area of radius. That kind of weapons are very much uh, demand high demand now. Sure. So the the divyastras looks like that to me. Like so, most of the divyastras uh, probably they can make some destruction within that battlefield, and there is uh, something very rarest of rare which uh, they put so much of caution like Brahmastra that this is the original <laughs> nuclear weapon, do not use it. <laughs> now, that kind of thing can be there, I mean, we c and it may it may only come from future, not from because that technology growth, if it is there in the past, like uh, th there is a technology build up sure. uh, leading sure. to, uh, sure. that sh should come into the archaeology, not there, it is only in the hype in the internet, it is not there in the archaeology. So, then very interesting point here, so 7000 years ago, you are mm -hmm. saying that, Mm -hmm. There could have been someone who would have traveled back to the past to Ramayan days, mm -hmm. right? And then would have perhaps given them a nuclear weapon or rather an idea of, of a nuclear weapon. Yeah, diluted fusion weapon. Diluted fusion weapon. Mm -hmm. Where would this intelligent species would have been living at that point in time <laughs> or, or in a different unit because we did not exist at that time, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am talking about maybe within 1000 years into the future. So okay, okay. And uh, see, maybe it may be like, uh, like we, I have this mentioned, like within 300 years, we will be in the solar system, uh, that L3 level. Sure. Oh, okay. Uh, and Understood. in the L3 level, we are there in, we, for example, we are there in uh, different planets, moons of different planets like Jupiter and Saturn and we are spread all over the solar system. So, in 2023 or maybe in 2024, uh, I mean, uh, 25th century, we discovered a, a time machine. Sure. So, we means we we means uh, we are in the solar system, the kind of L3 civilization spread across the solar system, sure. and we are somebody with the time machine is uh, going into the uh, Kurukshetra war period and then giving these weapons. Mm -hmm. It's uh, they will be reported as uh, devatas given the weapons, okay. Okay. like that. The Indra and Agni and Yama and Varuna gave the weapons to Arjuna. That is the kind of way it will be recorded, right? Sure. Because they don't know all this history yeah, of we. Yeah progressing into a solar system civilization, nothing they don't, they are Absolutely. not aware about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So, they will, anybody coming from future, the, that civilization in which they enter will be mapped into whatever ideas they have in that particular period. Sure. 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 Yeah. So, one final question on Ramayan, right? So, did Ram become God or rather are we, have we been worshipping him because he, the way he conducted himself? or just because he killed Ravana, mm, what yeah. could have been the reason? Correct, that is absolutely important question because we are talking so much of about aliens. So, I absolutely reject the idea that uh, Rama is an extraterrestrial or an alien because of which we are worshipping uh, Rama. It is completely not true because our civilization is very much focused on the character compared to technology because we always say the Asuras, the Maya Dhanava are highly I mean, their Maya is basically technology. The Maya has a capability, uh, I mean, at least poetic or real uh, Maya has a capability to revive a person from the, you know, like dead body, they will Maya will put into a, in a, into a pool, I mean, recovery pool and then the, the that uh, dead Asuras will return back to life. Sure. But Maya is not considered as, uh, you know, worthy of uh, worship like Rama. So, our focus is primarily into character. Absolutely. So, uh, why Rama is worshipped is not because of his divine powers, 
even if he is exhibited because Valmiki made him a real human being with no divine powers. But assume he is even having divine power, that is not the reason we are worshipping Rama. Primarily because of his character, which is like uh, he was the kingdom, like he, the entire kingdom was his, his own actually. He was about to be uh, coronated as the prince of Ayodhya, mm -hmm. means Yuvaraja, that means subsequently he will become Raja. Mm -hmm. But on the same day, he was asked to like forget about whatever you have to go to forest. And in order to accept that sudden uh, shocking thing, uh, without any uh, kind of perturbation on the mind, that is a divine quality. So, that divinity, that is like uh, somebody who is in a higher consciousness, I mentioned about Brahman, Brahmi state, only those people can do that. So, that divinity is what uh, making Rama worthy of worshipping in temples. So, that is my take on it. And I say because in our uh, tradition, Sanadana Dharma, there is no difference between like God and uh, human as a separate things. God cannot become human or human cannot become God. We do not think like that. Our thing is like gradually, it is a continuum. So, anybody, any human being with elevated consciousness automatically become divine and uh, he become even higher than Indra and others. So, that is our principle. So, that way Rama is worthy of worship because of his higher consciousness. And uh, compared to Rama and Krishna, see what Rama done is basically what Krishna has mentioned in Bhagavad Gita like nishkama karma or the uh, detached with the things. So, Krishna says uh, not to be attached in the Bhagavad Gita. Same thing Rama is not attached to the kingdom or throne or anything. So, he lived. So, Rama's Gita is basically his life. Whereas, Krishna actually verbally told that Gita to Arjuna. Absolutely. Okay. So, now I think I would love to conclude at this stage. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I just have a question on insulators. So, uh, you see that Enceladus uh, is spewing vapor mm. uh -huh. into the space and it looks like a plume on itself, mm. right? So, where is it getting its energy from? What is the core of Enceladus made of? Ah, right. right. Uh, so, this uh, Jovian moons, right? So, they have a property uh, called uh, this tidal uh, friction. Uh, so, because the Jupiter is a very highly, you know, gravitational force of Jupiter is very high. And most of these moons are very close to the Jupiter. Even if it is far away, it does not matter because it is very, very strong gravity. So, they, when they rotate around Jupiter, there is a tidal force created. So, even though they are in a frigid environment, like even beyond Mars, so supposed to be very cold, because of the tidal energy, that is a tidal energy, like it can uh, like uh, melt some frozen, uh, like more, typically Enceladus have a water, frozen water uh, in its uh, layer, one of its layers. So, frozen water get uh, melted and it becomes water vapor and then comes like a, it is a volcano basically, so water volcano basically. So, even Io and Enceladus both exhibit that property, even Europe also, Europe also have this. Almost all, that is what I was mentioning about this, water is become very common now, getting very common everywhere. So, water in the form of ice is almost there, uh, guaranteed to be there in most of the moons uh, of Jupiter and because of tidal forces that energy is created. So, it is not uh, it is not the solar energy, it is not Jupiter energy, but it is because of the tidal, uh, just like moon have tired, you know, that similar tidal forces, uh, water get melted because its heat is generated coming out like that. So, I have a follow on question on that. So, uh, you said that water has become common across um, mm -hmm. our solar system and oxygen is what we need here mm -hmm. on earth to breathe, mm -hmm. sustain life. Mm -hmm. Will oxygen be oxygen in another planet? or will it be in a different form? As in, uh -huh. let us say oxygen is needed here on earth and it is good for us to sustain life. Mm. Will oxygen be the same when it is there on any other planet? Ah, yeah, yes. So, the oxygen in the relationship with life can flop, flip flop because in the planet earth also in the very beginning uh, during the pre-com that uh, the protozoa and all this uh, primitive life forms uh, from bacteria cyanobacteria etc. So that time oxygen was a toxic gas. If uh, this life form come in contact with oxygen, they will die. So, oxygen has got a flip flop relationship. So, only after the photosynthesis, uh, the plants uh, discovered photosynthesis, oxygen becomes a life giver. So, for example, in another planet, uh, there will be life forms sustaining on water, but not depending upon oxygen and maybe even uh, consider oxygen as poisonous. That is a possibility. True. 
one last question yeah. before we close out yeah. so um, voyager 1 and 2 have gone out of our solar system long yeah. ago and then they are in the interstellar space right now yeah. but they continue to send data right so yeah. where the draw where are these drawing their energy from ah yes so there is a voyager 1 and 2 they have a kind of a sub a same thing subdued nuclear uh, energy generators so that is the main source of energy and uh, slightly the, so the solar energy is very feeble but uh, slightly it can capture the solar energy so main source of energy is this uh, nuclear uh, fission energy which can actually create uh, some good temperature also inside that preventing it from freezing the circuitry from freezing and that is like in chandrayaan 3 we lack that technology and it froze uh, almost frozen but we checking again 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 and again but it may be come out that it is frozen like that right. yeah. thank you so much jirit yeah.